I've made my way to a Central Asian nation that's famous for its oil, its Soviet rocket launches and its vast open spaces. It was made even more famous by the antics of that fictitious character, Borat. Once a major stop on the old Silk Road, it is today a place where East truly meets West. So join me as I attempt to show you a fraction of the largest landlocked country in the world, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is the world's ninth biggest country and is further from the ocean than any other nation in the world. In fact, its 2.7 million square kilometers is bigger than all of Western Europe. This presidential republic was once part of the Soviet Union, but is today proudly independent, though the Russians still utilize Baikonur, the world's oldest and largest operational space launch facility, which lies in a remote area of the nation's desert-like steppes. Easily the most economically advanced of the stands, Kazakhstan is reinventing itself as a uniquely prosperous and modern Eurasian nation. Its president, Nura Sultan Nazarbayev, who has ruled Kazakhstan since Soviet times, is forging a peaceful, multi-ethnic nation that's home to the once nomadic horse-riding Kazakhs, ethnic Russians and a whole mix of Korean, Central Asian and European peoples that are either Muslim, Christian or of other faiths. This is a place to trek in summer, ski in winter and mingle with friendly, welcoming people. Most people arrive here via the biggest city, Almaty. I was staying at the Hyatt Regency, a stylish hotel where the lobby features an adaptation of a traditional yurt or tent. The leafy commercial and social hub of Kazakhstan, Almaty has an almost European feel with its quality hotels, slick boutiques, chic cafes and streets thick with BMWs and Mercedes. In 2011, this city will host the Asian Winter Games. My tour began with a visit to some of the city's key attractions and its monuments to freedom and history. Um, in the square of Almaty, the official name is the Republic Square. And in front of us, we can see the Monument of Independence, which was inst installed recently in 1996. And, um, if you travel all over the world, if you are in London, in France, you may see many in Rome columns and on the top of the column the monument. So we inherited the same universal concept and you see the column but it's decorated with the national patterns, ram's horns, which in Kazakh culture represents um, health and prosperity. Well, here at the base of the column is the handprint of the country's president. Now, local custom says if you put your hand in his print, then that's going to bring you good luck. So, let's see if it works. A visit to the Green Bazaar will allow you to get up close to the diverse mix of local people. The main languages here are Russian and Kazakh, with a few others thrown in the melting pot. Now, if you go exploring in Almaty, you'll see the mix of East and West in people's faces. The ethnic Kazakhs, they make up around 60% or more of the population. They are the majority here. The Russians, though, started arriving in the 1800s, and today they represent around 20% or more of the population. The rest, well, they're from throughout Europe and Asia. So, it's a fascinating melting pot. Oh, fantastic. Oh, Mount Tajikistan. Mount Tajikistan. Ah, Mount Tajikistan. Abrikot. Huh? Alright, how much is that? 100 gram, 200 kg. So, 100 grams is like 2 dollars. Very, very reasonable. Okay. And it's fantastic, it's delicious.
you go. Uh, you can't come to Kazakhstan without trying one of the local specialties. Now, i got to tell you, it's not something I would normally drink. Now, this is fermented camel milk. And right there is fermented horse milk. So, yeah, believe me. And this guy loves it. He's buying a whole vat full. And I'm going to give it a go. It's good? What? Yeah, I should, I should try it. Uh, All right, he says I should try it. So, here we go. Let me think, what's it like? It's like, um, it's a bit like drinking a sour yogurt, actually. I'm told too much of this stuff your first time around. You might get a very upset stomach, but um, yeah, it's certainly unique. Oh, wow, yeah, excellent. <laughs> It's a very happy customer. Thank you. <laughs> All right, bottoms up, hey? Horse meat is also big on the local diet. We've got um, all sorts of caviar here, local and from Russia. Black caviar, red caviar, highly prized. Of course, it's expensive everywhere in the world, but quite a bit cheaper to buy here. Now, how would you describe the people of Kazakhstan? I mean, are that they? I mean, everybody's seen this movie Borat. That's not Kazakhstan, is it? <laughs> but uh, I mean, for you, how would you describe? Kazakhstani people. I mean, is there a way to describe Kazakhstani people? Um, open, friendly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are they adventurous? Are they sort of uh, quite keen to, to explore like what's going on in the rest of the world around them? Oh yes. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I mean, for the young Kazakhstan today, for young Kazakhstanis, for instance. I mean, what's their dream? You know, what, what, what sort of are you seeing taking shape here with the, the way that the future is going with the country? I think we can see the trend of integration, of globalization, and uh, the borders are open nowadays, and people are free to travel, and um, so a lot of international companies are coming here, a lot of business people are coming here, a lot of biz Kazakhstani business people are traveling abroad, so. We, we, we feel the globalization in Kazakhstan. Then it was time to venture up to Koktobi, otherwise known as the Green Hills of the city. If you want to see some great views of Almaty city, then head up here to Koktober. Now that means Green Hill. Now there are three ways to get up here. You can take the cable car, you can drive, or like me, you can walk. From this lookout you can relax, buy souvenirs, have lunch and admire the snow-capped Trans-Ili Alatau Mountains that overlook the city.